ladies and gentlemen. This is Wild and Unbelievable News, where we cover some of the craziest news stories from around the world. And I'm your host, Toon Dollars. Up at number six on today's episode, source is www.10tv.com. Canton, Ohio, the repository, authorities say an Ohio woman was arrested for calling 911 when her parents cut off her cell phone service. The Canton Repository reports that Saloni Katarpal was arrested February 13th by Masilin police and charged with disrupting police services, a felony. Jail records show Katarpal repeatedly called dispatchers because her parents ended her cell phone service, which they paid. Yo, hold on, pause, stop. Take a minute to think about that. She called the police because her parents cut off the phone. Now wait, there's more, listen. An officer advised she call emergency services for only emergencies. Records show that she called again two hours later and was belligerent and stated she believed it was a legitimate issue. Records do not list an attorney who could speak for her. Now, first things first, this lady's, I believe, 36 years old. She's 36 years old. You look at her mugshot, she's a whole grown woman. <laughs> Yo, she's a whole grown, she got the eyeliner on, she got bags under her eyes. Her parents shut off her phone and she called the police. Now, for a child, maybe I can understand a child doing that. Kids don't know no better. But she's not only above her 20s, she's in her 30s. She should know better. She should know a lot better than, than my parents shut off my phone. Let me call 911. Excuse me, uh, uh, can you guys send police? My, my mom and dad shut off my cell phone. Are you serious? Like, you got to be kidding me. I couldn't believe it when I read it, but this is cross-checked. I cross-referenced it, and a lot of other news stations are reporting the same thing. That's surprising. She not only called them once, but multiple times. And at that, it was considered a felony. I didn't even know that. Like, it was a felony to be calling, and it, they call it disrupting police services. So she got charged with that, and it looked like she got booked. <laughs> Look at her mugshot. Oh, man. Up at number five, the source is www.upi.com. Man finds 82-year-old message in a bottle on the beach. Hey, yo, check this. February 19th, UPI, a British man walking his dog on a beach found a message in a bottle that had apparently been drifting in water for nearly 82 years. Yo, 82-year-old message in a bottle. That sounds like a storybook. Nigel Hill said he was walking. Listen to his name, Nigel. <laughs> He, yo, he reminded me of Nigel from Eliza and the Wild Thornberries, her pop. Yo, that's throwback. Nickelodeon. Nigel Hill said he was walking his dog on the beach in the Belle Royale area on the English Channel, Island, Jersey, when he found the glass bottle containing a letter that was dated September 5th, 1938. And we're in 2020. Notice I had to look up to think about that. We're in 2020. And this was supposedly written on September 5th, 1938. And if you look at the little letter, the letter looks like it was folded. It looks pencil written, it looks handwritten. I mean, let's continue to read. The letter, which was signed John Stapleford, so I'm, I'm assuming that was his name, the person who wrote it, included an address in Hertfordshire, England, and asked that the person who finds the bottle get in contact with its offer. Hill said he managed to get in contact with the current resident of the listed address, but they were not related to the former resident and didn't know how to contact his family. Wow, that's crazy. Like an 82 year old letter shipped off in the water in a little bottle and somebody actually found it 82 years later. Like I'm hoping this is legit. Like as far as like that's a legit letter and somebody didn't write it like 10, 15 years ago and just dated back <laughs> they, you know what i mean they could have probably dated it back in the day and it was really sent out last week no but if it's an official letter that was sent off in the sea and found 82 years later that is amazing hill said he thinks it's unlikely that stapleford is still alive yeah right that's crazy because if you look at the date 1938 he could have been in his teens or 20s when he wrote that letter and put it out in the water that would make him over 100 years old now so that is incredible. But I would just check and cross-reference that person's name and see if that person ever lived at that address. They have to have some type of documentation in the city uh, records department, 
or in the archives that says if his name actually lived there. And if he lived there and that's true fact, that is dope. Like, that's like a historical artifact. And I would try to find his kids because that might mean something to them. You know what I mean? That's amazing. That's amazing right there. Up at number four, source is www.uk.reuter.com. Drink like a Mexican kingpin. El Chapo beer launched by daughter. Yo, she gangster, like for real. Listen to this. Guadalajara, Mexico, Reuters reports, have a cold one. Have a El Chapo beer. Yo, they really put quote unquote El Chapo beer. That message of Alejandria Guzman, yo, that's his daughter, whose company has developed a craft beer dedicated to her infamous incarcerated kingpin father, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Notice how they put his whole little, little kingpin father, Joaquin El Chapo. He got like seven whole names. Three of them are adjectives. <laughs> The beer is part of the El Chapo 701 brand. Yo, his daughter made a brand after him. And, and I guess the chapter of the brand that she's selling the beer under is the El Chapo 701. It literally says El Chapo 701 brand, which has already launched a clothing line. Yo, get out of here, dog. His daughter is an entrepreneur. She's like, I'm going to take daddy's money and I'm going to clean it up. <laughs> Yo, and gets his name from when Forbes named him the 701st richest person in the world in 2009. Forbes estimated his net worth at $1 billion at the time of 2009. Stop, let's, let's take a minute to like, you know, inhale this article. His daughter, the kingpin, the drug cartel's kingpin's daughter started a business, not one, but two. She started a clothing line. You could cop the El Chapo gear. I didn't even know that, dog. Like, somebody mail me an El Chapo shirt. Yo, El Chapo's daughter, if you like, you know what I mean, watching this, you can feel free to mail me some of his merchandise. <laughs> and not only did she create a clothing line, she created a beer, dog. She, she's like an alcoholic beverage. Yo, she is the definition of a young entrepreneur. I wonder if she used some of his money as startup capital. Think about that, right? Food for thought. I wonder if her, her pop had some type of hidden reserve somewhere and she had access to it and she's flipping it. This prototype is a lager and it's made up of malt, rice, and honey. So it's good, said Adriana Italte, a salesperson for the brand. And the idea is for it to be sold at bars that stock craft beer. A 355 milliliter bottle is due to be priced at 70.10 pesos, which is equivalent to $3.73 in US dollars. Wow, that is. And if you guys don't know about El Chapo, Google him. <laughs> that guy escaped two maximum security prisons. Not one prison, but he escaped it twice. And then they got him the third time, which where he was extradited and found guilty, et cetera, et cetera. And now he's sentenced to life in prison, which means my man um, is going to have his books filled for life. Like his daughter going to be taking care of him, make sure her dad got money. You know what I mean? Up at number three, source is www.upi.com. Patient plays violin while undergoing brain surgery. February 20th, UPI reports. A brain surgeon in London had a patient play her violin during a tumor removal to ensure her musical abilities weren't affected by the procedure. Yo, her brain was open, her head was open, and he literally had her while they all operating on her brain. Like, this, this, this can't be life. Like, King's College Hospital shared video showing Dagmar Turner 53 years old, playing her violin while the neurosurgeon, Dr. K.O. Mars Ashkan and his team removed her brain tumor. So first thing I see is I see the lady in her gown with a head cap on. She has her violin. She got the stick and all of that. And you got all these surgeons around her with the mask on and they're operating on her brain, yo. What's so weird and intriguing and strange about this is that what if they would have hit some type of cell or some type of nerve that would have affected it? So if she would have been kicking a song and then what if they would have accidentally did a boo-boo and like, eh, like she would have just stopped the music. Like, that's kind of scary. Like, this is incredible. Listen to this. We perform around 400 resections, AKA tumor removals each year, which involves rehousing patients to carry out language tests. But this was the first time I've had a patient play an instrument. Ashkan said, that's vicious dog. Like that is, 
That is crazy. Mad props to that team and mad props to the female who went through it. Because I would have been like, y'all got to put me to sleep. <laughs> You're not opening my brain. Could you imagine like, like her head was open and peeled open? I'm sure they had it numbed out. And she was probably under some sedatives to an extent where she could still operate her hands and still think about the notes. But as a musician, like she gotta be on point. Like she had to be focused to like be be playing and and know that like I'm playing. But like imagine you got doctors, you got people digging at your head. Yo, shout out to her. Up at number two, source is www.brookandjubaradio.com. Steven Spielberg's daughter pursuing career as adult film star. It's common for children to follow in the footsteps of their parents, pursuing a job similar to the one their mother or father holds. So it should be no promise that one of Steven Spielberg's seven kids plans to dip their feet in the movie industry. However, 23-year-old Michaela Spielberg is doing it by becoming an adult film star. That got me like, huh? like a little crooked face, like kind of confusing, like, why in the world would she want to be, you know, an adult film star when her pop is Steven Spielberg? Michaela, who the famed director and his wife, Kate Capshaw, adopted as a baby, told England's The Sun that she has already self-produced videos featuring only herself. Oh, snap. And hopes to get a job. What? Yo. And hopes to get a job dancing in a strip club. Yo, they're going to be throwing dollar dollar bills at, at Steven Spielberg's daughter, dog. Like, that's crazy. Like, you going to go, like, like is, like, is that strip club going to be the most popular strip club? They're like, yo, yo, let's let's go to strip club because cause Steven Sp Spielberg's daughter there. Yo, that's that's un un uncomfortable. If I was her parent, like, that's quite uncomfortable. But listen, wait, there's more. She described herself as a creature. I'm not going to use that word. Fill it in. And explained, I got really tired of not being able to capitalize on my body. And frankly, I got really tired of being told to hate my body. And I also just got tired of working day to day in a way that wasn't satisfying my soul. Dog, like, I mean, your pop Steven Spielberg, like, he don't, like, toss you a little chump change. Like, he don't give you a little boost start. Like, he can't, like, help you, like, a small business investment. And when you make the bread back, you pay it back to him. Steven Spielberg, come on. He made, like, hundreds of great movies. Like, <laughs> As for how her famous parents reacted to the news, she revealed her aspirations to them on FaceTime, and they said they were intrigued and not upset. Dog, in, intrigued. Like, I'm. Listen, if that was my daughter, me and her gonna have a gonna have a boxing match. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> no, that is. How would y'all feel about that, fathers out there? If your daughter told you some news like that, I, I don't know. I think that would be quite disturbing. Like, she said her stage name will be Sugar Star. I repeat, look out for Steven Spielberg's daughter's name. Google Sugar Star and you'll find her. That's it. That's next. Up at number one, source is www.mirror.co.uk. Inventor dons jetpack and zooms over Dubai at speeds of nearly 150 miles per hour. What's up with these wealthy people flying everywhere? Like, I want to fly. Can I, can, can I fly too? <laughs> From RoboCop to James Bond, jetpacks are staple features in many popular blockbusters. But the technology is now a reality, and one brave inventor has even shown off his jetpack while zooming over Dubai this week. Vince Raffet, widely known as Jetman, took to the skies over Dubai wearing his Jetwing jetpack on February 14th. Within eight seconds of taking off, he reached 100 meters in height quickly climbing to heights of 1,000 meters in just 30 seconds. My man was out. The inventor also threw in an impressive roll and loop at a height of 1,800 meters, reaching speeds of almost 150 miles per hour. My guy is gangster. Yo, he look at him. Look at that shot. Like, yo, like, first thing first, it's Dubai. Like. I'm not shocked at people in Dubai doing this type of stuff because they're wealthy beyond belief. They have like unlimited bank rolls. They have checks on top of checks on top. Like if you think Spielberg got checks, these people in Dubai, they are sitting on bank. So when you're wealthy, you have nothing else to do but just invent stuff and experiment and just fly around and stuff like that. <laughs> but my man successfully built a jetpack and he tested it out. Then he hit him with a with a, with a loop and with a loop de doop and with like a spinny spin and all of that. Like 
that's stuff that you see in video games or in movies. Finally, after around three minutes of flight, Mr. Rafet opened his parachute before landing back on the ground. Mr. Rafet said, we are so happy we achieved this incredible flight. It's the result of extremely thorough teamwork, where each small step generated huge results. Everything was planned to the split second, and I was overjoyed by the progress that was achieved. It is another step in a long-term project. One of the next objectives is to land back on the ground after a flight at altitude without needing to open a parachute. It's being worked on. During the flight, Mr. Rafet was equipped with a carbon fiber wing powered by four mini jet engines. Dog, and they got a, a, a parachute? Like, yo, man, these, these people like, psh, I'm in the wrong business. I'm in the wrong business field. If anybody out there in Dubai, hey, buddy in Dubai, if you need me to document your little jetpack experience, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> Thankfully, should an engine failure have occurred, Mr. Rafet was backed by a safety parachute. Hence why he had a parachute on it. Because could you imagine like his first test flight, he's flying and then something like engine failure and you're just stuck up there. You're going to fall. You're going to go down fast. But I guess if it would have failed, yeah then he would have just used a little parachute and floated down. His first flight was three minutes long. I bet you them three minutes felt like, sheesh, it probably felt like forever. Cause when you're up there flying the human body, we don't fly. That's one thing, we don't fly. We don't have that physical experience of knowing what it feels like to fly. He knows what it feels like. I don't, and probably you don't, unless you got a flying device that you've been holding out on. <laughs> if you've been holding out, you you better hit, hit you better right down below. Yo, two, come and come and interview me about my little jetpack. But. Seriously, man, like that is very inspirational. It's cool. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. The video speaks for itself. The pictures, the visual. Mr. Refect, good job, sir. Like, I look forward to seeing what you guys do with it. Imagine if in 10, 15, 20 years, those things become commercially available. What? Between flying Ubers and flying jetpacks, the sky's going to be filled. Like, it's only going to be me down here in my old school cars on the ground, scraping the ground. <laughs> I'm gonna be scraping like, scared, scared. And you're gonna have everybody up there. Hey, good news is when everybody's up there flying, people shouldn't be rushing us, driving by us, and like trying to go through us. Cause more people up there means more ground for me down here. Yeah, I like that. All right, guys. So this concludes today's episode of Wild and Unbelievable News. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, comment below, let me know your thoughts, and stay tuned for our future episodes. Thank you for watching.